Don't buy your first home without watching this video first. It can save you thousands of dollars. Here are my top 10 things that everyone should know before buying a house in Toronto. And you're definitely gonna wanna stay until the end. The last tip is a game changer. Number one is don't go house broke. You got that pre-approval letter from the bank and they've given you the green light for a certain amount of money. But here's the thing that most realtors and mortgage people won't tell you. And that is just because the bank says that you can use it all doesn't mean that you should use it all. Your bank determines your home buying power based on your income, your debt, and your credit score. But here's the catch. They don't consider life's unexpected curveballs like a job loss or maybe a health crisis that causes you to lose your income. It's better to budget lower than to use the maximum that the bank suggests. This way, you're not putting yourself at risk for any potential financial loss in the future. Plus, that extra money that you save can be put to good use. It could be used for a savings account, a retirement fund, or for investing. What is often recommended is the 28% rule. So that is 28% of your income should go towards your mortgage because there are other expenses that you need to consider outside of your mortgage. Some of them are expected like property tax and home insurance. Everyone kind of knows that, but others are unexpected. You want to think things like replacing the roof or replacing, you know, big systems like an AC. By sticking to the 28% rule, you're ensuring that your mortgage doesn't eat up most of your income and you don't end up like most people which are house broke. Number two is not doing enough research on your future neighbors or the neighborhood that you're looking to move into. All right, so you found the perfect home, but you haven't really explored the neighborhood yet. Not only do you wanna check out the neighborhood and that street during the day, but you also wanna go at night at different times throughout the day. You never know, maybe those quiet streets that you thought you were gonna be living on aren't so quiet after all. I'm out. You can't leave. You watch me. Deuces. Another thing that you want to do some research on is just knowing what the commute times are for you with your daily hotspots, like driving to work or driving your kids to school or going to the grocery store. The question you want to ask yourself is, can I live with the traffic and the travel time and the commute time that is required to all the daily spots that I need to go to based off of where my new location is going to be? And lastly, yes, you want to know who your neighbors are. Honestly, it's not nosy, it's being smart. If you're going to share a wall or a fence for the next five to ten years with someone it's worth investigating who that person hey, is going to be so let's talk about what you need to look out for you want to check on their home maintenance watch out for any excessive junk or messiness are their lawns well maintained and also their cars something to look at as well. Are there any unpleasant smells, barking dogs? Do you wanna know if, if there are people who, you know, throw a lot of parties or maybe they just, you know, there's a drummer next door and they play loud music and he's playing the drums really loud. These little things are things that might not seem like a big deal, but if you have to live with it for the next five to 10 years, it is going to be a big deal. It is also another great idea to ask the listing agent if they can provide any more additional information about the neighbors as well. Yes, of course, neighbors come and go but the bad ones seem to stick around for some reason. So you definitely wanna know what kind of situation you're getting yourself into. Number three is looking into development applications. Don't get me wrong, development is always a good thing, especially for the value of your home, but it's always better to know, should there be any potential projects in the pipeline that's happening around your new home? You can definitely do some research yourself. All you have to do is hop onto the toronto.ca website. There is a section called development projects so that you can see if there's any kind of projects that are happening in your local area. This matters because future developments may actually affect different things that matter to you, like your view, right? It might block natural sunlight that you love about this house. You like the big windows and all the light that comes in, but if this new building comes up and it, it you know, takes away that light, then that might make a big difference for you. It might also mean that you're gonna be in a construction zone in a sense and have lots of traffic around you for years to come. So maybe that's something that is not worth it to you right so there are pros and cons to development happening around your home so this is something that you want to definitely look into 
Also, another thing that you might want to consider researching is the Toronto Transit Plan, which I know changes very often, but it could be very helpful to know if any new LTR lines could be running through your backyard in the next coming years. And it could actually increase your property value significantly, so it could be a really good thing. However, it would be best if you were mindful of its location, vibration, frequency, and sound, which are all things that you may not want to live with. So these are all things that you want to consider, which is why it's important to do the research. I'm going to be leaving a whole bunch of links for you guys in the description box down below. Number four is stop worrying about cosmetic issues. When it comes to buying a home, I notice a lot of people get really stressed out about the little things like the wall colors, the countertops, or the backsplash. You know, maybe it's just not their taste, they don't like the colors or whatever it may be. But you have to remember, especially when looking for a home, that these are minor changes that can be done over a weekend. And they should not be deal breakers when it comes to looking for your perfect home. Here's the reality check, no home is perfect. Instead of stressing over the cosmetic issues, you wanna focus on things that you can't change. Of course, the one big one is location. You cannot move the house. I would say location and the floor plan, these are the heavy hitters. These are the things that are gonna make a difference. And while you can often change the floor plan, it often comes with a hefty price tag, right? It's a lot of work, it's a lot of money. So those are the type of things that can be deal breakers. Now here's the good news. Things like paint, flooring, and minor cosmetic changes, these are the things that can easily be fixed that don't need to break the bank. It's all about putting your money where it matters most. Even the dreamiest homes won't be 100% perfect. There is always something minor that people are gonna wanna change that is normal. Trust me, I see people make this mistake all the time. Saying no to a fantastic home just because of a minor detail, only to regret losing it later. Number five is street parking permits and mutual drives. This is going to be extremely important, especially if you're looking at a home that doesn't come with its own parking space or no garage. And if you're curious about street permit availability, the quickest way to get a response is going to be emailing this email right here. I'll let you know if the permits are available, the cost of the permit, and whether there is a waiting list. Yep, you heard me right. There are waiting lists sometimes, so it's very important to find this information out. And this is the key tip, guys. Always verify that a permit availability is available before you actually make an offer on the home. And that is because when it comes to street permits, it's not always guaranteed and there are waiting lists, so you have to call ahead of time. Imagine moving in and finding out that you don't even have a parking spot for your own car. Now let's talk about mutual drives. If you don't know what that is, it's a shared driveway between two neighbors and it can be very tricky, honestly. What you'll notice is that most of these mutual drives in Toronto are very, very small spaces. One thing that you need to do is check if your car actually fits through that space. Honestly, most of them are quite narrow and not all cars fit, especially SUVs. So it's not gonna be easy for you to pass through those driveways and actually use that space that's in the back or even use that driveway. One thing you don't wanna do is rely solely on the MLS listing about if it says you know whether an SUV fits or doesn't fit or anything like that. You always need to double check for yourself. Additionally, you also have to consider that the space in the back is usually very often small and doesn't really, especially when you consider it's for two different properties, right? So sometimes there's like two garages back there and there's just not a lot of space. It's very hard, especially if you have an SUV to even move around that space in the back and then get through. So a lot of times it's not gonna work for people unless you have really small cars. So this is something that might be an issue for some people and is something that you're gonna definitely need to look into. Number six is don't buy something expensive before buying a home. You wouldn't be surprised, but a lot of people fall into this mistake Getting a new line of credit or making a really big purchase like a car right before buying a home is a big no-no. This can have some very serious repercussions when it comes to the loan that you're trying to get approved for from the bank. So please avoid opening any kind of new lines of credit or making a significant purchase about six months at least before buying the house. The reason for this is because the bank sees this as a potential liability and it might impact the amount that they're willing to lend you. It is important that you get your loan approved first before making any kind of big purchases because you may not be able to get that loan. Remember that your pre-approval is based on the information that you provided at that time when you applied. So any changes like a new job or taking out a new car loan can cause the bank to actually offer you less money. 
or in some cases actually deny you the loan altogether. So this is why this step is very important. Number seven is consider the school zoning. Again, just because the MLS listing says that your new property is going to be in this great new school district, that doesn't mean that it's actually going to be true. You need to double check all the information. So what you're gonna wanna do is actually go to the Toronto District School Board website, and there you can easily locate the neighborhood schools by clicking on the school location all you got to do is punch in the address and you're good to go and when it comes to doing some research on good schools um, there is some websites out there that you can get some information from I'll leave the links down below there is the Fraser Institute that does ratings for schools um, they are a little bit behind on ratings right now but I believe they're gonna be updating it soon so that's something to consider but I do highly recommend doing more research than just finding a few websites online because there isn't that much online honestly I would actually pick up the phone and talk to the school principal or even talk to parents of children who attend that area area school to find out more about the school. Remember that the quality of the neighborhood schools can actually dramatically impact the property value. So even if you don't have a family or you're not planning to have a family, it's still a good idea to do this type of research to know because it's going to mean that your home, that property is gonna be more valuable if it's in a really good school district. Number eight is always do a home inspection. This decision alone can potentially save you thousands of dollars. You always want to do a home inspection. Now there are times when there's some realtors who are going to advise you to do a conditional free offer, especially in a very competitive market and there's like bidding wars happening and all of that. Here's the truth, getting an inspection not done is very risky and can lead to significant financial issues down the road. And honestly, it's funny if you ask me, but how many agents themselves would not actually skip the inspection and actually take their own advice? Most agents would not do that. Choose a real estate agent who's gonna put you first, who you can actually trust. Because at the end of the day, most agents would not do that. They wouldn't actually go through without an inspection because they know how risky that actually can be. Now, sometimes there are clients who insist on you know, a condition-free offer because of the market, bidding wars, or whatever it may be, and they really want the house. At that point, the agent needs to make sure that they clearly outline the potential consequences of going through with a conditional free offer. I personally believe that your peace of mind is worth it because an inspection usually costs between like $200 and $500, which is a very small amount considering the potential thousands of dollars that you might need to pay if there's something that's really wrong with the house and you never did an inspection to find out. I personally know people who have not done an inspection just to get the house to later find out there was these huge problems and it cost them so much money and it was not worth it. And they are very, very upset. They're upset set with their agent but of course you know there's nothing that they can do about it now so they're stuck with this home they had to you know stuck being paid all this money to fix these huge problems and so it's something that you definitely don't want happening to you it's very important to get an inspection also you want to consider that some lenders may even require that the house meet criteria standards before getting approved for your loan so it actually might be required so this is something that you definitely need to talk to your mortgage person about especially if you're thinking about doing a conditional free offer now if you're suspect that their termites might be you know in that area in that neighborhood that's very important that you actually do this type of inspection as well so the reason why termites are you know very <laughs> sneaky and dangerous and destructive is because the damage is actually comes from the inside out. So this could be happening without you realizing it. You actually need to get a proper inspection done to know if there's termites in the house. The good thing is it doesn't cost that much. It costs less than a regular inspection and it might save you from a potential headache down the line. Number nine is rental contracts and buyouts. It's actually quite common for house owners to rent their like hot water tank, for example, via their provider like Enbridge as an example here in Toronto um, there are some homeowners that also have you know rent to own contracts for their furnace air conditioner or heat pump if this is the case it's very important to know what the monthly rental fees are you want to get a copy also of these contracts and the bio information honestly you might be shocked to find out what kind of fees are involved is really not uncommon to see buyout costs at like $15,000 for an AC or furnace. So this is something that you really need to know about in advance before making an offer on the house. 
Number 10 is looking into building permit status. So now let's talk about something that many buyers, agents, and even lawyers overlook sometimes, and that is the building permit status of the house. There are actually so many building permits in Toronto that are opened, and it happens for various reasons, but it's important to know before buying a house. I'm gonna provide you guys with a link below. You guys can check it out. It actually lets you see what kind of statuses there are out there for building permits um, for the last five years. So let's say that someone did a renovation on their home and it was completed, but for whatever reason, they never got the final inspection done. That means that it's still open. This permit is still open and it never was closed. I wanna know the status of these things because what if the work wasn't completed or what if it wasn't even done properly and they never actually received a final inspection to see if everything was fine? There might be something wrong and you don't even know it. What that can mean for you is costly repairs and renovations that you weren't prepared for. And if you wanna dig even deeper, there is an open portal link as well that allows you to actually see past five years. Now, it's not as user-friendly as the other website, um, but there is that information out there if you're looking for it. Here's a bonus for you guys that's stuck until the end, which is front yard parking. It is very important that you double check that your front yard pad parking space is a legal one. As of 2007, both new and unlicensed front yard parking pads have been banned in most downtown Toronto areas. That is why it's important and essential to ensure that your front parking pad space is licensed, registered with the city, and legal. At the present time, owners of legal parking pads pay the city about $270 per year, and they also have like a little plaque that they have either at the owner's porch or front of the house, so you can kind of know whether or not it's a legal pad. A quick call to the city's office of permits and enforcements can help an agent or the buyer to find out about the status of the license and what steps are needed to be taken to transfer that license to the new owner. An important note here is that the license does not follow the property. A new property owner will need to apply to transfer that license agreement and if it has not been renewed for any reason, it is not automatically transferable to the new property owner. So this is important because the parking adds so much value to the home, especially in the city of Toronto. So do not assume that it is a legal parking pad because you may lose like 50 to 100K worth of value on your home if you think that this is a legal pad parking space and it's not. Plus you might actually need that space for parking and it's not actually legal and you can't actually use it. Quick little insider tip, if a parking pad is really important to you, it's best that you find a home with one already, a legal pad of course, because even if you have space at the front of your yard, in front of your house, and you want to apply to get a legal pad done, the city is likely to say no. Okay, that's just a little heads up for you guys. They are not really allowing it much right now, so that is something to think about. There you go, that's the list. If you have any more tips, then definitely help out the community by putting it in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear from you, and if you're thinking about making that move to Toronto or thinking about buying a home in Toronto, all of my information is down below. Me and my team are always ready to help anyone who is looking to make that smooth move to Toronto. And if you want to see more videos like this one, then definitely click on this one right here. And until next time, guys, see you around the city and God bless.